Hey guys, today we're going to look at the Pi Network and the B Network, which are two projects that are looking to solve one of the significant issues faced by Bitcoin, which is the ease of accessibility. Many corporations and companies make up the majority of Bitcoin mining power through operating their own Bitcoin mining farms. Due to the significant capital needed, it's become challenging for the average network contributor to compete and receive block rewards. Thus, the Pi Network and B Network seek to make cryptocurrency more easily accessible and obtainable for people worldwide. For this purpose, they developed a way to allow anyone to mine cryptocurrency from their mobile device. So we'll get started with the Pi Network. Launched on March 14th, 2019, the Pi Network describes itself as the first and only digital currency anyone can mine on their phone. Instead of using enormous amounts of electricity to solve complex computational mathematical problems like Bitcoin, the Pi Network secures the network through security circles where members vouch for each other's trustworthiness. In addition, the Pi Network rewards its users with Pi, the network's token. I'll give a quick, very technical explanation of how this works. Let's go. The Pi Network achieves non-energy intensive mining by adopting a consensus algorithm based on the Stellar Consensus Protocol, SCP, and the SCP's Federated Byzantine Agreement, FBA. The Pi Network relies on its node software that runs the SCP algorithm and handles the trust graph information. The integration of the SCP and FBA solves the issue of centralization faced by the Byzantine Fault Tolerance, BFT, algorithm. Rather than a quorum determined through centralized means, Nodes decide whom to trust and include in their decision-making group, thereby creating multiple quorum slices and forming a decentralized quorum. Validators can only accept incoming transactions after a particular proportion of the nodes in the quorum decides to accept the specified transactions. All right, getting back to something a little bit simpler, what can you do on the Pi Network? Once users join the Pi Network, they can play different roles to contribute to the network. The four available roles for Pi users are 1. Pioneers, which are the regular Pi users that sign into the app, mine, and validate their presence. 2. There's Contributors, which are Pi users that provide a list of Pioneers that they trust. This role becomes available to Pioneers after finishing three mining sessions. To become a contributor, users need to include three to five other users in their security circle. Number 3 is Ambassadors, which are Pi users that bring new users to the Pi network. They can earn up to 25% bonus on their base mining rate for each person they successfully invite. And fourth are nodes, which are users that are pioneers or contributors that use the Pi mobile app and run the Pi node software on their computers. So now let's look at the B network. Launched in December 2020, the B network is a clone of the Pi network with a focus on gaming. As a result, it's very similar to the Pi network. The most notable similarities include the mining procedure, having schedule, and the roles users can play in the network. In addition, the B network rewards its users with B, the network's token. Not much information is available about the project's technical details, as its white paper consists only of the introduction, project vision, and basic project details. The B network also did not mention how it maintains consensus. However, it likely utilizes an algorithm similar to the one used by the Pi network. This is deduced through its white paper, which states that B network is specifically designed as a network consisting of genuine people and also mentions the term security circle. So what can you do on the B network? Similarly to Pi, users can play different roles in the B network. However, there are only three roles that users can play, which are pioneers, which are the same as pioneers on the Pi network. They sign into the B app and mine. Then ambassadors, which are also the same as the ambassadors in the Pi network, they invite new users to the B network and onto their team. The B network claims that ambassadors will be able to complete missions with their team members in upcoming in-app functions. And last, verifiers, which are similar to the contributors in the Pi network. Verifiers verify the identity of the members and confirm that the members are trustworthy and not fraudulent. The B network team will launch this role in the future and require everyone to complete KYC verification before utilizing the full functionality of the B network. Now let's look at the similarities. Other than the similar consensus algorithm that I just mentioned, the other notable similarities are as follows. First is token value. 
Both the Pi and B tokens earned in the mobile applications of the Pi network and B network have no value as they're not listed on any crypto exchange, decentralized or centralized. The two networks do plan to list their tokens in the future. Next is app functionality. The Pi Network app and the B Network app both allow users to mine tokens and act as a wallet to hold the mined tokens. The two apps also have a chat section and both have plans to include D apps on their platforms. Next is the referral scheme. People looking to join the Pi Network or the B Network will need a referral code, which can usually be procured from the review section of the Android Play Store or iOS App Store. The two networks implement a model common in pyramid schemes and multi-level marketing. In such a model, Pi and B users earn bonuses to their mining rate when the people they invite join the networks and start mining. Another similarity is the mining procedure. Pi and B users only need their smartphones to mine tokens. They just need to install the app, complete identity verification, and sign up for an account with a referral code. Then users only need to log in daily and click a button to get the tokens. Then there's the halving schedule. The Pi Network and B Network have the same halving schedule. Both networks have an initial mining rate of 1.6 tokens per hour. Then when the number of users reaches 100,000, the mining rate halves and becomes 0.8 tokens per hour. When the number of users reaches 1 million, it halves again to 0.4 tokens per hour. And the halving of the mining rate continues when the number of users reaches 10 million, 100 million, and 1 billion. The final mining rate at 1 billion users would be 0.05 tokens per hour. Despite all these similarities, there are a few distinct differences between the two projects, such as the identity of the team, the project roadmap, and app privacy. So first, let's look at the identity of the development team. The Pi Network has a known team, Nicholas Kakalas, Cheng Diaofan and Vince McPhillip are the co-founders of the Pi Network. They are also Stanford graduates where Kokalis and Fan hold doctor's degrees while McPhillips holds a master's in business admiration. However, McPhillip has left the Pi Network and moved on to other ventures. In contrast, the team behind the B Network is anonymous, which to many people is not very reassuring. Then there's the roadmap. The Pi Network has a deployment plan that lists the development phases such as the testnet and mainnet launch. However, the release of the phases is not based on any concrete numbers, but rather the feeling of the community if the software is ready for the next phase. On the other hand, the B Network's roadmap lists out milestones the network needs to achieve before moving through development phases. For example, when the number of users is between 1 million to 10 million, the network will launch KYC verification and introduce Node and DApp ecosystems. Lastly, there's app privacy. On iOS, the B Network app only collects contact information, while the Pi Network collects more contact and identity information, such as email addresses. On Android, the Pi Network's app collects similar contact information and includes potentially dangerous permissions in which it can change system settings if users allow it. On the other hand, the B Network's Android app is much more intrusive. The B app requests permissions to the camera, contacts, location, phone storage, notifications, and the running apps. While you may choose to reject such permissions, B network is undoubtedly less privacy friendly than the Pi network. So in conclusion, the Pi network and B network are two very similar projects where users can mine tokens from the comfort and ease of their smartphones. Users need only to install the app on their phones, start mining at the click of a button. The Pi Network was launched in 2019, and the B Network, which is basically a clone of the Pi Network, was launched in 2020. Since the B Network is a copycat of the Pi Network, the two are very similar in forms of token value, app functionality, referral scheme, mining equipment procedure, having schedule, and mining rate. However, the mining rate may change depending on the growth of users on the two platforms. Nonetheless, the two projects do have some differences, such as the identity of the development team, the project roadmap, and app privacy. Again, the Pi Network has a known team, but unclear roadmap and less intrusive app. On the other hand, the B Network's team is anonymous and its app is much more invasive, asking for permissions such as camera, contacts, locations, phone, and storage. But on the positive note, the B Network has a clearer roadmap with clear milestones based on the number of users. So these are both interesting ideas that could potentially turn into something larger. But for now, the tokens generated don't have any value, and critics speculate that they never will. Nonetheless, using the apps is low barrier to entry and seemingly low risk. 
So many users see it as an easy first step into crypto. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.